This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. And today I wanted to talk about drive chains on Bitcoin. The context for this is that Bitcoin is really, really difficult to change. And this is a feature rather than a bug, as a lot of people imagine. If Bitcoin were easy to change, any government, any central bank, any other attacker could just swoop in, make changes and castrate Bitcoin. Fortunately, they cannot. Now, a cryptocurrency like Ethereum is not quite so fortunate. Ethereum managed to destroy itself and any shred of neutrality that it used to have left by moving to proof of stake. Unlike Ethereum, though, with Bitcoin, there is still no widely agreed upon path to implementing Bitcoin software changes or upgrades that involve large changes to the rules. And this is actually a good thing. We don't have a leader like Vitalik with a bully pulpit and a roadmap who tells everyone what's coming next. And that's because Bitcoin is highly decentralized. That is, it's not controlled by a small group of insiders while Ethereum is. And of course, Ethereum has Vitalik who gives you the roadmap. He tells you there's gonna be the surge, the verge, the purge, and the splurge. This doesn't look like a very decentralized path forward. Now we're gonna be talking about drive change drive chains, which were put forward by Paul Stork. I believe I'm pronouncing his name correctly. And this involves two different Bitcoin improvement proposals. These are BIPs, BIP 300 and BIP 301, which I'll link to in the description notes below. I forgot to mention that Paul Stork is the CEO and founder of Layer 2 Labs, which raised $3 million to quote unquote supercharge Bitcoin's ecosystem. This is of course always another red flag when you have a company coming in with VC money trying to change Bitcoin, but we're gonna talk about that in a moment. So what is Drive Chains? Drive Chains is a proposal to change Bitcoin software in order to make it easier to create what are called side chains. And a side chain is just a separate blockchain that's somehow connected to the Bitcoin blockchain. A well-known example of a sidechain is Liquid, for example. This was created by the company Blockstream. It's run by a multi-sig that's run by a, full, a federation of different corporations, mostly large corporations, exchanges, etc., where you basically lock up some BTC on the base layer of Bitcoin, and then you get to use a proxy for that Liquid BTC or LBTC on the Liquid network, and then you get faster blocks, better privacy guarantees, etc. And because you're locking up Bitcoin on the base layer, this does not create a new token that's not backed by Bitcoin and it doesn't increase the supply of Bitcoin. So this is not a ship coin or anything like that. It's currently not that widely used. Liquid is usually used now mostly just by large traders who's, who are moving Bitcoin between exchanges and doing various arbitrage trades. Now side chains always have trade-offs, just like everything in life has trade-offs. For example, in exchange for faster blocks and better privacy, with the liquid side chain, you expose yourself to the risk that the liquid federation will collude and take your Bitcoin. It's highly, highly unlikely, but of course, still possible. Now under the drive chains proposal, these new side chains, and you could create many of them, would be secured by existing Bitcoin miners using what's called blind merge mining. So Bitcoin miners would be simultaneously mining on the Bitcoin blockchain and on one or more side chains, and thus they'd receive mining revenue from both. Now, a lot of Bitcoin miners love this proposal since it would increase Bitcoin mining revenue, especially going into the Bitcoin halving when they're about to have their revenue from the block subsidy cut in half from 6.25 BTC to 3.125 BTC. And that halving is going to happen sometime next year at the end of April or early in May, it looks like, depending on how fast the blocks come in between now and then. So drive chain sounds like a really good idea at first. Imagine being able to create any side chain that you want with cool features like more expressive smart contracts or better privacy guarantees and all of this tied to the most powerful and secure and well-known crypto network in the world, which is the Bitcoin network. For example, you could even run a side chain that runs a version of Monero and have it all secured by Bitcoin miners. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to help out the channel, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and leave a comment. So what's the catch with drive chains? The biggest catch is the unknown unknowns, of course, because whenever you change Bitcoin software, you open yourself up to lots of unintended consequences. For example, the SegWit witness data discount plus taproot gave us ordinals and inscriptions. So we gotta be very careful moving forward. The Bitcoin ecosystem is still in the process of absorbing those two last soft forks, the SegWit and Taproot. Taproot happened, I believe it was November of 2021. So these are still fairly recent. So it's far too early to be talking about another soft fork 
anytime soon. Let's revisit this drive chains discussion in 10 years from now would be my advice. It's also, I want to talk about Paul Sork a little bit. It's not appropriate for quote unquote friends of Bitcoin like Paul to advocate for very fast changes to Bitcoin and to try to pressure people as it appears to me he's been doing on Twitter and elsewhere. When you're talking about the base layer of a new global money, it's not appropriate to move fast and break things like it might be at Facebook and Silicon Valley. Any significant changes to Bitcoin's core consensus rules need to be approached with tremendous fear, trepidation, and respect. And the default mode should be to not change anything significant. In other words, the basic consensus rules until there's an overwhelming consensus and urgency to do so. It is not appropriate at any time in this context to be a bully, to try to use the Bitcoin miners as a cudgel, to try to use VC or corporate power to try to force through changes to Bitcoin. And this was a path that was taken during the New York Agreement and Segwit2x, and it failed back in 2016, 2017, when these big companies and the big miners, something like 80% of the Bitcoin miners signaled for Segwit2x bigger blocks, and they all lost. They were defeated by us plebs during the block size wars, even though I was not a Bitcoin pleb at the moment. I only came into Bitcoin in 2019. So I'll link to this article about Segwit2x, but this is the precedent. And what it shows people is if you are gonna to try to use corporate power or try to collude with Bitcoin miners to push something through on the Bitcoin plebs and their nodes, you are going to fail. You are certainly gonna fail. Now I'm obviously not against fixing minor bugs or making Bitcoin Core compatible with the latest version of Mac OS. We don't want complete ossification. We need to have various uh, maintenance work done on the software, but what I'm talking about here are major changes to the consensus rules. What will be the effects of drive chains on Bitcoin miner incentives if they were to put, be put through? This is a very, very important question. We're still wrestling with everything that can go wrong under current incentives, and now these drive chains people want to introduce lots of new complex incentives that could have bad implications for Bitcoin's base layer and how it is secured. I think Hoddle Knot here had a great way of putting it, in a complex and balanced system like Bitcoin, any small change to the code will have an exponential outcome in terms of risk. Game theory, attack vectors, bugs, incentives, social attacks, regular, regulatory attacks, etc. All of it has the potential to change in ways that are hard or impossible to predict. I think Zender here has an interesting take on a potential problem with BIP300. He claims in this tweet that under BIP300 rules, just 26% of miners can lock coins in a drive chain indefinitely, can lock up Bitcoin in a drive chain indefinitely. Imagine USA government mandating Foundry, which is a Bitcoin mining pool, to never release coins from a privacy drive chain. Miners have the option to use an alarm, which is a vote that downvotes all proposals, et cetera, et cetera. But these are the kind of unintended consequences we have to be very, very careful about. When you think about it, we Bitcoiners really have zero need for drive chains at this point. Who needs more tokens? Who wants to make it easy to issue ship coins on side chains? These are just things that I'm not interested in. I don't care about running Monero on a side chain. We have Bitcoin. We have Bitcoin and with it, we already have the most secure store value and censorship resist and peer to peer money that has ever existed. And we understand how it's secured, what makes it neutral and decentralized. And at this point, all we need to do is just not F it up by adding unnecessary bells and whistles at the, as the drive chain people want us to do. So what's next? If this gets, if this gets ugly, drive chain proponents can attempt to pressure, can attempt to apply pressure to Bitcoin core devs to try to change the software to include drive chains. They won't do this because they know that full nodes like you and me will refuse to run this changed software. Drive chain proponents could try to bribe or collude with Bitcoin miners to start running drive chains, but what will happen then? Full nodes like you and me will just refuse to approve blocks that contain any of this drive chains nonsense. And I have some advice to Paul Stork. Why don't you go build your drive chains on a low value network like Litecoin or Bcash? See how it works there, then get back to us in five or 10 years and let us know how it worked, and then maybe we can talk again. Here's some of my predictions of BIPs 300 and 301 will never be approved. There's now vast community uh, opposition to it just because of the way that Paul and other people have handled themselves. I predict that Paul will rage quit like a little baby when he finally realizes that he's not gonna get his way and that he's not bigger than the Bitcoin 
network and that he can't push through these changes. Here's some advice for everyone. If you ever want to offer a new BIP, a new Bitcoin improvement proposal to the Bitcoin community, don't be Paul. Approach the community with humility, not with threats and bribes and fear mongering. It's going to be Labor Day weekend in the US here. So that means I'm going to be taking some time off with my family. No video until next Tuesday. But if you're feeling bored, you can watch my uh, back videos on YouTube, or you could also check out my paid course and the paid Bitcoin form, which is part of Bitcoin University Premium. You can use a special coupon code LABOR23 to get $10 off. And I'll put a link in the description notes below where you can check out the curriculum here in the Ultimate Guide to Bitcoin, all the different courses, which includes coin joining, um, how to buy anonymous Bitcoin, how to run your own node, how to build your own Bitcoin multi-sig vault. And then it also includes the Bitcoin forum as well. So feel free to check those out while I'm gone. I look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.